Yo, 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 what's going on, y'all? It's Cone back here again today with another video. Real quick, before we get started, I wanna thank y'all personally for 20,000 subscribers. Just an absurd number that I can't really comprehend. 20,000 of y'all hit that subscribe button on my channel. It just, it blows my mind. If you haven't hit it yet, make sure to go ahead and do so. But really, if you've ever just watched one of these videos, liked, commented, shared it with a friend, if this is your first video you've ever watched, welcome to the channel. But thank you so much for supporting me in whatever way you have. You're helping me make a dream become a reality and all of your support is the whole reason why I'm here why I do this so thank you so much it means the world to me but without further ado let's go ahead and talk about the Memphis Grizzlies who right now are sitting at 16 and 9 on the season they're tied for the second seed with the Phoenix Suns in the Western Conference and just half a game back of the one seeded New Orleans Pelicans Memphis also has a game against Detroit tonight that if they win will extend their win streak to five games and once again push them up to a tie with New Orleans so within a few hours of this video going up they could very well be tied for the one seed so things are going really well. Not that that's super surprising because Memphis last year was one of the best teams in the NBA, getting the second seed out West. However, when I watched that team, I wasn't quite as sold as I am on them now. Last season, it felt like they were this young, fun, upstart team, but not really true contenders. It just felt like they didn't quite have that experience. However, this season, things feel completely different, and I'm starting to buy more in on the Grizzlies, not just being a contender this season, but having real dynasty potential down the line. The biggest reason for this, of course, is John Morant, who isn't just like a special guard talent. Talent. He is a generational, one of the best guard talents we've seen in quite some time type player. It is amazing what he does every single night. If you watch Memphis Grizzlies games, there's about three to maybe like 12 moments every single night where John Morant will do something that just makes your jaw literally hit the floor. His athleticism, off the charts. He is like a Derrick Rose, a Russell Westbrook, a John Wall type athlete, which is very rare in the history of the league. His verticality, his speed, his ability to change directions in the air. It literally feels like he levitates when he jumps. And he's far more than athleticism too. On the season, John Rent is averaging 28.3 points per game, 6.6 .6 rebounds, 7.6 .6 assists on 46.5% shooting from the field and 37.9% shooting from three. Every single number I just told you outside of his field goal percentage is a career high which is wild for a player that just won most improved. Now, he does still primarily go and attack the rim. That's his main form of offense. He shoots 61% around the rim. One of the best finishers, mainly relying on that athleticism, but he's also very, very crafty because he utilizes his hang time, his ability to just jump over defenders to get in the position he wants. But when guys do contest and they can play some really good defense, but a lot of times it just doesn't matter because he'll flick it up over his shoulder or just hang in the air for way longer than they can and flick it right up over the hand of the shot blocker. John Morant is one of the most underrated crafty finishers around the rim in the league. Most people think he just runs and attacks and throws on these ferocious dunks and does everything, you know, athletically, but his finesse is also there too, which speaks to his continued improvement because it's not just finishing around the rim, it's his ability to jump shoot. That has gotten better in the mid range. He knocks down floaters. His three ball is exponentially improved. When he first came in the league, he was shooting like lower than 30%, I believe. I think he hovered around like 29% in his rookie season. Now he's shooting in the mid thirties, which is excellent for a guard of his caliber in terms of attacking the rim. Because when you have someone who is so speedy, so athletic that can get to the rim in about half a second, like you blink it, he's there, but can also knock down a three ball at a reliable clip. How do you guard a player like that? The answer is you can't. If his three ball is falling, John Morant is one of the most unguardable players in the league. And he continuously improves, not just in attacking the rim, but in his three ball. So he's just getting more and more dangerous. And all of it at just 23 years old. His prime is still probably four or five years away. Alongside him in the backcourt, you have another star in Desmond Bain, who is still criminally underrated by a lot of casual NBA fans. You know, if you watch this channel, if you pay attention to a bunch of the games, you probably know his name and how good he's been. But in case you haven't, let me inform you because you deserve to know. On the season, Bain is averaging 24.7 points per game, 4.9 rebounds and 4.8 assists on 46.5% shooting and a scorching 45.1% from three on 8.5 three-point attempts a game. That is absurd numbers. He's shooting 45% from deep on almost nine threes a game. That's ridiculous. That is legit elite shooting territory, not just elite, but like all time great shooting season level territory from Desmond Bain. That's the type of player he's become. 
He's an all-star caliber player at the guard position, alongside a most improved player candidate. After last year, he probably should have won the award in the first place, which his teammate John Morant did end up taking home. That's just crazy development from a player that originally fell in the draft because scouts saw him as older and thought there wasn't much room for improvement. However, he's gone from being just kind of this catch and shoot guy to an elite shot creator for himself, especially around the three point arc. He's able to get his shots off very quickly too. He can knock it down in the face of immense pressure. One of the best perimeter players in the league. And once again, still very young at just 24 years old. And you have Jaron Jackson Jr. who is also playing some of the best basketball of his career. He's averaging 18.6 points per game, 6.2 rebounds, 3.1 blocks, which is absurd on 49.1% shooting and 34.8% from three. He's not only once again, looking like an all defensive, maybe even defensive player of the year caliber guy this season, but he's also knocking down shots consistently, which has been an issue with him. He's consistently been a pretty solid defender outside of some foul trouble issues, but offensively, there are some signs of him being a high level score from the perimeter and inside. It's just not been really, you know, there all the time. However, this season, he's doing it consistently. He's doing it on both sides. And if he continues to play like this, he very quickly becomes one of the best two-way bigs in the league. So it's these three players, John Morant, Desmond Bain, and Jaron Jackson Jr. in particular, that are leading them back to championship contention. However, so far this season, we haven't seen all three of those guys on the court together for a single minute, which is one of the most absurd parts about their success so far. Once again, they're 16 and nine, just half a game back from the one seed in the West. And these three players, their three stars, have not shared a single minute on the court together. Desmond Bain has only played 12 of the Grizzlies 25 games. Jaron Jackson Jr. has only played nine. He just returned. So these guys have hardly played. Both of them have played less than 50% of the Memphis Grizzlies total games. Well, John Morant has missed four matchups, yet they're still hovering right there at the top of the conference. And that speaks a lot to the ability of other guys to step up, which is another strength of this team, not just now, but going forward, their depth is absurd. Surrounding their three stars, you have some high-level role players, guys like Steven Adams, who set some of the best screens in the league and is super integral to their offense. You have Dylan Brooks, who is very inconsistent and streaky shooting-wise, but there are some nights where he's absolutely on fire. I witnessed it firsthand against the Thunder a couple nights ago, but also he's going to continuously give you high-level defense, be one of those pest-type players that opposing teams hate to go up against that every championship team wants to have. Tyus Jones is still underrated, one of the best backup point guards in the league. Zaire Williams, who was a top 10 pick for them last season, just played his first game of the year a couple days ago. He didn't play super great, but once he gets back to his rhythm the way he was playing last season, and I think he'll be even better, that's another piece that's going to add to their success over the rest of the season. You get great play from Brandon Clark and Santi Aldama, who have both given them good minutes at the four spot. You've got John Contra, who is a sneakily good role player and has started a good number of games for them in the absence of some of their other players players. Jake LaRavia, who they got in this year's draft, as well as David Roddy, have given them good minutes. LaRavia as a shooter and Roddy as just a big physical body that really builds on this physical brand of basketball that Memphis tries to play. The Grizzlies legitimately go 10 to even 12 players deep, and no matter who they put in that rotation, they step up without fail every single time. There's nobody in this roster that I don't think the Grizzlies would be comfortable with putting in basically whatever scenario they need them to, because they have gotten all of these guys ready to play. They know what role that they have to pop into, if an injury happens, which a lot of them have happened, the Grizzlies have been one of the most injured teams in the league, yet it hasn't mattered because everybody knows exactly what to do in that lineup when their number gets called. They know the role they play, and a lot of that goes back to the coaching of Taylor Jenkins, who's become one of the best coaches in the league, in my opinion. What he's done in Memphis has been nothing other than extraordinary. You also have to give a ton of credit to the front office, who have not just scouted and drafted while continuously bringing in high-level players. Basically, if someone gets drafted by Memphis at this point, I just expect them to be good, but they're also doing a phenomenal job of developing players. You see how John Morant has grown. Jaron Jackson Jr. has grown. Desmond Bain went from a player that was supposed to have a pretty low ceiling to now being an all-star caliber player. Some of these other young guys who weren't supposed to be very good this quickly have looked like really solid NBA players in their second or third seasons. The Memphis Grizzlies have turned into one of the most consistently exceptional franchises in the league. With all of this combined, the Grizzlies have real dynasty potential over the next few years. In particular, this whole team is really young. The oldest guy in their roster is Steven Adams, who's 29 years old. There's nobody 30 or older on the entire squad. Some notable players include John Morant, who's 23, Bain, who's 24, Jaron Jackson Jr., who's 23, Brooks is just 27 years old, Jones, Clark, and Contra are 26, Aldama's 22, Roddy, Williams, LaRavia are 21. They're so incredibly deep 
shape despite being so young. So as these young players that play big minutes for them, whether it's just in spots or as role players, whatever, as they continue to get more reps and improve, they will only get better. This team becomes deeper and deeper almost organically. They don't really even have to make trades because these young guys are just going to keep progressing as we've seen them do over the past few seasons. And not only that, but if they decide they want to add another star next to Job Bain and Jaron Jackson Jr., they've got a great package of young players and draft picks to deal for one of those stars. There are very few teams in the league that have a better package than what Memphis can offer theoretically. In fact, if they even want to go all in on a superstar, giving up one of Jaron Jackson or Desmond Bain, they've got that option too because they're so deep. I'm not saying that's something that they should do. I'm just saying that that is an option. And I trust their front office with the way that they've grown, developed, and executed everything so far for this team to make the right decisions. If a superstar or a star becomes available, I guarantee they will make the right call to help build them towards a championship contender in Memphis. I just, it feels like it's almost impossible for this team to fail in a big way. I think at least they'll be a championship contender for the next like five, six seasons. Maybe they don't end up winning a title because you do have some injury concerns with John and Jaron Jackson Jr. who have both missed significant time at one point or another due to injury in their young careers. However, if those two guys can stay healthy consistently, the rest of this team grows, develops, the front office stays exceptional. They have a real chance to define the 2020s as one of the best squads in the NBA consistently. As the NBA transitions from an old era to this new one, the Grizzlies are at the forefront of everything. Led by John Morant, who has the potential to be one of the faces of the league for years to come, the Grizzlies have a real chance to establish themselves as the most consistent powerhouse in the Western Conference, maybe making a couple finals runs, and eventually taking home a title to the city of Memphis, led by John Morant, Desmond Bain, Jaron Jackson Jr., this young crop of great supporting players, maybe another star down the line. And by the end of the decade, I would not be surprised at all if we look back on this Grizzlies core and think of them as probably the most dominant squad of the 2020s. Appreciate y'all watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss on any of these videos. Go ahead and comment down below what you think about this Grizzlies team. Do you agree that they have the potential to be a dynasty down the line? I appreciate y'all watching. I'll see y'all later. Real one say it back.